One morning, something wakes me up early. I get out on the deck and see that Galopin has completely turned around and is about to knock into the two boats ahead of me. The wind has shifted and all the boats are awry. I pull in a few meters on the anchor chain, but that wasn't enough. Something had to be done. So I tied a line to Galopin's stern and pushed it with the dinghy so I could wrap the line around this cone buoy. It temporarily held Galopin in place so that I could take the dinghy and drop a stern anchor. Now we are secure front and back. Finally, I woke up Dan and Mel to let them know the situation. They were close to hitting the boat behind them. There was another thing to check. My battery water levels. It's a chore to get to them. After unbolting 36 bolts, access is easy. I have two standard batteries and one gel. It had been about three years since being installed without being checked. That being said, and checked, all levels are fine. Paige had delivered my adjustable solar panel braces. They looked good, but I tried one and realized the braces were 10 centimeters too tall. I marked them and gave them back to Paige to adjust. My battery levels seemed a bit low. They needed to be charged, so I gave my generator a try, another first. I was able to plug in devices and camera batteries to charge, and of course, the service batteries. I let the generator run until it ran out of gas. The Ark sailors had cast off this morning. The marina looked empty. But I noticed a familiar face on a diesel dock. It's the crew of Distant Shores, pioneers of sailing videos. They were the real first. I said hello and goodbye and thanked them for being part of my inspiration. Partly, it was why I was here now. Later, I went to check out the cash and carry store. It's not quite that. Here you select from the counter and they bring you out your goods. Only in large quantities though, no single items. Then I went to Pepecha visit. This was where we came to have food and music a couple nights ago. This place is awesome. Love it. In Pepecha's neighborhood. Pepecha's the man. Of course, we had a couple of rum shots called Stumperat here. It'll calm the shakes out of you straight. The boss is preparing pork shish kebabs, which later are grilled to perfection. This is definitely the place to be on weekends. On the way back, I got a couple of grilled chicken drumsticks and shared them with the locals. I gave a bone to the skinniest dog, just so she could get robbed by a tougher dog. It's a dog's life, I guess. But they don't seem too unhappy here. And look, they're free. Back on Galapan, I installed my finished braces. They're functioning just like I imagined. Pesh had adjusted their size, and I cut plastic washers out of a cheap Chinese cutting board to keep the two different metals apart and allow mobility. For now, I'm just using Dyneema lines to adjust and keep the panels in place. When I'm on the boat, I pivot the panels in line with the sun. It adds charging efficiency, which is vital when at anchor. Natasha had prepared a feast for some friends. This is Christine and Jean-Marie whom we met in Canaries. Joel would be leaving for South America tomorrow. Paige, of course, had to be with us. Jean-Marie and he had known each other 14 years ago. We're living the life, right? Well, the sailor's life is a lot of work, let me tell you. Your boat needs constant attention, from generating electricity, two periodic shaves. I asked Natasha if she'd be willing to give Galapin a scrub, and she enthusiastically took on the challenge. Meanwhile, I attacked the propeller. Life was teeming there. But look at that prop and drive shaft now.
do the keel eventually, and the rest of the hull, but I don't want to scrub off any more layers of anti-fouling for now. We'd work hard the past few days, and it's time for some play. The wind has come today, a fine day to go exploring with the dinghy, ready with the mask and snorkel. As I've said before, there are several shipwrecks in Mandelo Bay. I have no information as how these ships became wrecks. My guess would be collisions. daily the traffic coming in and out day and night. Yachts, fishermen, container ships, dinghies, all swirling around. Then again, the wind can really blow here. For whatever reason, these boats have surrendered to the sea. Further was another beach relic from another time. It was Russian. Soviet, in fact. You can see the logo on the chimney. That means it's been here for years, and it's not going anywhere. We would have liked to swim around it, but with the swell and tide, I thought it'd be better to stay afloat. And we had to get back upwind and against the swell, which was more pronounced on this end of the bay and increasing as the day went on.
Back in our little community, we admired a classic sailing super yacht and made a swing around the other sailors when we stumbled on Blue Pearl. It's Rene and his family's boat. He's been following me on YouTube and even donated to Winded Voyage. We've become friends. He and his partner Jolie are really cool. They'll soon be sailing to French Guiana with their two little girls. Brave. As for us, we got a lot more to discover. Right here on the island of Sao Vicente. <laughs> Yeah. 